Now before we begin today's video, I'm afraid there's something you all should know. The beard is gone. <laughs> yep, I'm getting my face tattooed tomorrow while I'm filming this video, so when this video comes out, I'll actually be getting my, ta my face tattooed. So I had to shave the beard to do it. Kept the mustache. I felt like, you know what? I kind of want to be one of those guys that just has a mustache. Not the bad kind. Not like, not one of those, but one of those. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get on to the video. Boa constrictors have to be one of my favorite species of snakes here at DVCB Exotics. I really think that these guys really make the perfect large snake, getting at a pretty impressive size. You know, this isn't anything that's gonna be like a king snake or a ball python, yet not getting too big it's where it becomes unmanageable. You know, some of the retics and berms, where it almost becomes once they get a certain size where you have to have two people in order to handle them. But the question of the day is, just how big do red tail boas get? Well, we're going to be answering that question today along with some other things that really comes with owning a snake that gets this large. Uh, with all that being said, let's sit back, relax, and dive into everything you need to know about big red tail boas. Roll the intro. And then just a quick disclaimer before we start this video. Uh, Viv is in fact a common boa, so when we're gonna be talking about red tails, I am just gonna be specifically talking about the common boa. Uh, any th sizes difference is going to be really depending on the locality of red tail you have, and if it is even a true red tail. Uh, usually the true red tails do end up getting a bit larger than the common ones. However, I just got a common one, so we are just gonna stick with that. Anyway, let's get Viv out. Let's get this video started. Oh, and all right, here she is, Viv, our red tail boa, or common boa. I know, I know I'm gonna get comments in the comment section. People being like, it's not a true red tail. Why'd you say, why'd you title this as a red tail video, Dakota? This is obviously a common boa, jeez. Some people. <laughs> right, so now to answer the first question, which is how big do red tail boas get? Well, here you go, they get, they, Viv, she's, she's on the, Red tail boas, <laughs> they get about this, this big. Here, here you go, there, there you go. All right, boys and girls, thank you all for watching. I'm just kidding. I've had Viv about four or five years and she's gotten to this pretty impressive size. I don't know exactly how big she is. Um, I wanna say she's in the ballpark of seven feet. I believe the enclosure that she's in is a six by three. And with that, she just stretches slightly over the six foot where she's starting to uh, go around when she's fully stretched out. So probably somewhere around the seven foot area. And now to figure out just exactly how big red tail boas get, we gotta answer a couple questions first. Uh, she's just, she's wrapped around the entire chair. I, I mean, she has my leg completely wrapped and then she's wrapped around the chair. What am I supposed to do with this? How do I make content when shenanigans like this is going down? But to really answer the question of how big boas get, first we gotta ask ourselves, is your boa a boy and girl? This is gonna make a pretty significant difference when it comes to the full grown size of a red tail boa, just because males tend to stay quite smaller than your average female. Usually when we're talking about male red tail boas, the average size for a common one is going to be anywhere around six to seven feet. They usually max out somewhere around there. Uh, so pretty much what this size is, let's, Try to get her back out again. Ugh. Pretty much what this size is, is pretty much going to be your typical full adult male red tail. However, when we're talking about females, they're going to get pretty larger. Of course, Viv still is on the pretty young age. She's about four years old right now, so obviously she's not at the fullest stage, but she's starting to get there. Um, typically, your female red tail boa is going to get anywhere around the eight to potentially 10 foot. As far as common boas go, 10 feet for a um, female is going to be more on the rarer side versus the more commonly going to be around that eight to nine feet. And of course, as you guys can see, Viv, oh, what are you, what did you do? What am I supposed to do with this? Do you, how, she's just completely wrapped around the armchair. This, 
Th this is the content, folks. I'm so sorry. But as you can see, boa constrictors are definitely not going to be one of those long and skinny snakes. These guys definitely have some mass on them. I mean, you can see here, Viv is a pretty heavy girl. Uh, usually your adult red tail boa is going to get anywhere between 20 and 30 pounds. Now, while that's not the biggest size, I mean, of course, we, we're talking about reed ticks and berms. I mean, there are even blood pythons can get way heavier. 20 to 30 pounds is uh, pretty heavy for a snake. I really do think these guys are the perfect size when it comes to owning a large snake, just because of the fact that, yeah, you know, eight to nine feet, that's pretty impressive as far as snakes go. So, like I said earlier, this isn't gonna be your ball python. I mean, come on, one, one of those compared to one of this, which one's the more impressive snake? I'll answer for you, it's boa. Boa is the correct answer we were looking for. However, still at the same time, with, <laughs> Still, at the same time, they're a pretty manageable uh, animal to own, you know? Although, you know, I'm saying manageable, but I'm having a tough time <laughs> multitasking with wrangling her and making videos at the same time. I can't believe that bows is pretty much as far as large snakes go. This is the biggest you want to get while handling with one person. Of course, usually as it goes with anything like, again, Burmese, African rock, three ticks, uh, anything like that, you're going to want to use the buddy system for that because snakes getting over 50 15 feet in length, that's gonna be pretty tricky to wrangle by yourself. And if something goes wrong, that's gonna be pretty tricky as well. Now, while I do say that I think these are the perfect large snake, there are definitely a couple things you should take into consideration uh, before wanting to get into red tail boas. Of course, here at DBCB Exotics, we preach that you know what you're doing before you get any large animals, such as, well, boas and up, as far as constrictors go, and monitor lizards. Don't, don't be one of those people that get the tiny little boa that fits in the palm of your hand, then it gets this big, and you're like, I don't want it anymore, now I gotta get rid of it. We don't like those people. Those people are not welcome here on, th on this channel. So the pretty obvious stuff, of course, owning a big snake means owning a big enclosure for the snake. I know, right? This isn't gonna be something you can stuff in a 20 gallon and call it and call it a day. These snakes need a large enclosure. Uh, right now I have Viv inside a six foot by three foot by 18 inch enclosure and this isn't gonna be the maximum for her. She's actually almost outgrown it to the point where I am gonna be upgrading her into an eight foot enclosure. Um, I really do think the eight foot, probably something like an eight by two by two or maybe even a little taller, a little taller would actually be a little more prefer if you're making a custom enclosure just because even though these guys are large snakes, they also enjoy climbing. Well, there's a fun little tip of information for you, but back to the topic. Of course, boas getting this large are going to need a pretty large enclosure. Uh, this is going to be not something you can get just at any pet store, you know, local aquariums or anything like that. Um, they're going to need either an aftermarket custom enclosure, such as something like AP cages or even uh, vib or vision cages, uh, boa file cages, anything like that. Or you're getting them to source it out and do the handiwork yourself. Uh, either way, both of them are fairly either expensive or time consuming, and with that, it also takes a pretty large amount of space. Of course, large snake needs a large enclosure, which needs a large amount of space. I know. I, I, I this is really, do I really need to be talking about this stuff, Dakota? Yes, yes I do. So, you know, if you got a small apartment and you, you're only living in a studio, I do not recommend a red tail boa because it'll take up half of your apartment. Moving on. Then of course, some other things to think about before getting this large of a snake, and that's going to be, they need large meals. I know, you will you will see a continuing pattern here in this video, and that's going to be, I use the word large quite frequently. Of course, when you're getting a snake that gets anywhere from eight foot plus, uh, they're gonna need a pretty hefty meal. Right now, we are feeding Viv jumbo rats. Uh, we may stick with jumbo rats. Maybe when she's a little bit bigger, she'll be upgraded to something like gerbils. However, jumbo rats seem to be doing the case. Uh, with that being being said, jumbo rats are not an easy expense, or a cheap expense for that matter. Um, jumbo rats usually cost me quite a few. I believe I usually get them in any quantity and they usually charge me about 50 or 60 bucks for a few. I'll put what I, my last receipt right here was uh, for large rats. Uh, it's something that definitely doesn't come cheap is the, uh, the big thing here. 
I guess a few other things to talk about is the fact though, pretty much what you can see, even though this boa is very large, uh, it's not something that's just going to sit in the palm of your hand. Well, palm of your shoulders. Um, this snake is pretty active. Boas are constantly active on the move. It's something, it's one of the reasons why I really love about them is just the fact that they're always exploring and on the move. Uh, however, that can be a pretty big challenge, especially if you're trying to multitask, like make YouTube like make YouTube videos. Uh, with that, they're always getting into mich mischief and you gotta be on the move and be ready to wrangle them back when they get into something that they shouldn't. All right, I think that is most of the random tidbits of information I can think of. Of course, this is a pretty short video. I mean, I, I don't know what else to talk about, man. That, that That's pretty much it. Red tail boas, awesome snakes. Um, not for everybody, with, for, with the things I just said. I guess, yeah, it's also a large snake, so you know, if. If you get bit, that probably doesn't feel good. I've only been bit by her one time, and it was when she was only like four feet, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. Now I just do tap training with a snake hook, and I don't have to worry about her biting me. It's pretty cool. However, if you don't do that and you, you get bit, that might that might not be so fun. All right, boys and girls, that is going to do it for today. Uh, pretty much this is the part where I do my outro now. Uh, once again, huge shout out to Zen Habitats. If you're unfamiliar with Zen Habitats, they are an aftermarket reptile enclosure maker. They make some immaculate designs like this right here. Just look at that. That is one heck of an enclosure if I do say so myself. Uh, this can actually be a really great enclosure such as their 4x2x2 two two option for a juvenile boa that's still growing. You can pretty much put them in there for at least a year, I would say. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like the perfect enclosure for your baby boa. If you guys are interested in getting Zen Habitats or some more of their cool enclosure sizes, you can check it out right down there in the description. Moving on, let's talk about some other stuff. As always, if you like the video, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of my animals or my breeding projects, you can follow me on Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, DBCB Exotics. We're also on TikTok. Still not at 10K, peeps. If you guys could uh, go show me some love on TikTok, I really want to hit that 10K. Uh, other than that, of course, we have some awesome merch designs like this one, These, those designs right over there. Pretty cool stuff. If you want to see some more of those, we got them down there at Teespring where we have Patreon. Patreon.com slash DBCB Exotics where you'll get up to date updates on all the breeding happenings here at Deep... At, come on. Come on, Viv, we're almost done. DBCB Exotics, of course, I have a multitude of different projects, and with that being said, you get to be up to date on them. There's a bunch of cool stuff, monitor lizards, big snakes, colorful snakes, everything in between. Uh, there's a couple different tiers for a couple different folks, stuff to get first dibs on my babies, discounts on that merch you just saw earlier. It's some pretty good stuff, guys, but if you want to learn more, it... <sighs> If you want to learn more, you just got to go head down there in the description. Well, boys and girls, this girl is giving me a run for my money, so I think this is the time where we wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Your name also gets to be in the outro. You're about to see him. Show it some love. Let's see it. Roll it. Roll the intro. Outro. I keep saying it. It's outro. Outro. outro.